For this highlight of 5.2, we would like to show off our newest iteration of vCloth. Now, vCloth has been around since Rise, but it's gone through a little bit of a refactoring, and inside of 5.2, we've made it a little bit more streamlined and a little bit more optimized to work with. So we're going to go over the sample asset that's provided with 5.2, we're going to jump into the engine, and we'll see how quickly we can actually get cloth working on a character inside of CryEngine 5.2. So right here in Maya, I have a standard rig, and everything is weighted, so if I were to grab the foot, we can notice it pops up and it deforms as it should. This right here is the skeleton, which is normal, and the body right here has been weighted to the skeleton. The only two things that are specific are the cloth sims. So if I were to go to Mesh Display and I toggle on the attributes, you can see now that I have vertex coloring on both of these. They're the same mesh, so if we were in to go and do Shift I, we would see one there. And then I'm going to select the other, and that's the other one there. To note, it says the render is the same topology as the simulation. This is just to ease our setup, but we would prefer to have a cloth sim mesh that's actually lower res than the render because it's a little bit more optimized and not as intensive. But for this case, they're exactly the same. So I'm going to press Shift I again. We'll jump back out. And this is pretty much all you have to do in order to prepare the actual simulation mesh to be brought into the engine. I'm going to go and click on Export, and we'll look at one of the other things that we need to do in order to make sure that the cloth sim goes out properly. If we were to click on it, we can notice that it's a skin file. And this render is also a skin file. This is nothing different compared to what the body is. But there's one specific thing that we have to do with Cloth Sim, and that is go into the CryEngine settings, which brings up the typical settings manager. And we would go into the resource compiler, and inside of this we have flags put up. One is to not wait, and then the other is force vCloth. This one is very important to have when you export the simulation mesh, because that's what's going to actually put the preprocess for the vCloth in that allows the engine to know this is actually the simulation mesh. Also make sure after you export to remove this because it will apply it to anything else and it's unnecessary data. So once you've exported it out as a skin file, it should go into your folder. And what we have is the render and the sim exactly as we said. And a nice thing in 5.2 is we're able to have the animations, in this case a walking one, inside of the direct folder. So internally at Crytek what we do is put the work files, which is the Maya file, and then we have the animations inside of the same folder as the object. So just keep that in mind when going forward, it's a little bit more streamlined and everything doesn't have to be in a separate animation folder. So now that we've closed that, let's go ahead and jump into the engine. I'm going to bring it over and let's go into the character tool. And if I bring this up, we can go ahead and grab our cloth player which already comes in here. We'll notice that it's bright green. That's because we have edges and wireframe on. And what we need to do real quickly is jump into a level so we have the lighting. So I'm going to go ahead and get in one that I already know works. So test vCloth, and this will bring up our end result. But it allows us to see where we're going and what we're getting. So we have our test player here. And let's see exactly what it takes to make him. So this is our guy from the cloth sim, and it's a CDF. And I'm going to hide the display options. If I were to go over to the side here, and we shrink down the skeletons, we can notice that we have walking. Now this animation, when I click it, you'll notice it brings up the walking. And if we're playing it, we can see that we have a floor point, which this would actually go with it if the root joint was displacing. But this is a cinematic, so therefore the guy is backing up with his root joint just being at the world zero. So let's go back to the cloth sim. So we can go ahead and grab that. And I'm going to grab the reset character so he's back. And if we look over to the side here, we can see that we have some attachments. Now these will be made separate initially, just like anything else with a CDF would be. So you have the CHR and the material and you're assigning the body. But we need to keep in mind that we have vCloth 2.0 attachment, and this is the simulation mesh that we just declared. 
So inside of this, we have all the simulation settings, and you can actually adjust all of them just as it would be another attachment, like a jiggle joint. It's important to look down at the files, though, because now we have a binding, which is the sim render.skin, and then we also have the sim binding, which is the cloth sim.skin. So the render and the sim are both there, and they're calling that material file. That's about all it takes in regard to the vcloth. So let me go ahead and close this up. And we'll get to the point of the proxies. Now these are specific proxy attachments. And if I were to go ahead and look, they're highlighted green. And you can see we have a proxy attachment right here. But we also need to come down in the purpose and make sure it's cloth. That way it knows that it needs to pretty much restrict the cloth from going through the feet, or in this case, the floor. So we have them set up on the root, we have them on the feet, and these are all cylinders that are in place and it keeps the mesh from actually going through. So just doing those steps, you can get a character in that's walking around with cloth and you can see that it's quite believable in the sense how it walks around and it's completely dynamic. And unlike the rope chain technology from before, with vCloth and the new optimization, you're able to have characters walking around with cloth animation or cloth physics in your level in no time.